Welcome to this, the first session in the module on mentoring skills. So what is mentoring? How does it fit in with other ways of developing people in organisations? That's what we're going to explore in this session on what is mentoring. The objectives of this session are that you'll be able to assess the difference between mentoring and other forms of help, explain the relationship between styles of helping, and evaluate different definitions of mentoring. So for this exercise, write down your thoughts on why organisations would want to use mentoring as a learning intervention. Here is the definition from Meginson and Garvey. Their definition is a relationship between two people with learning and development as its purpose. So what are the benefits of mentoring to the client or the person who is being mentored? Well, these firstly can include learning and development. I mean, this is the main benefit, and it is about the huge amount of learning and development that can come from the mentoring process. Another benefit is having someone to open doors for you. A mentor will often be able to give you access to more senior people within the organisation who are able to influence more. Another one is getting settled in more quickly to a new job or a new role. With a mentor you can find out more about the organisation, how it works, about its culture and how things work best in the organisation. Mentoring also offers a ready source of advice. When you want help you'll know exactly who you can go to and normally have preferential access to them. This means that you'll be able to get hold of the information more quickly. Mentoring provides someone to problem solve with. So when you have a problem, you have someone who can help you think through it and someone to bounce ideas off and to help you find the most appropriate solution. Then there is shortening the learning curve. Your mentor will be experienced and will be able to help you by telling you ways that he or she have resolved things in the past and their learnings and mistakes. This all helps to speed up your learning. Next is learning to learn better. The more you use your mentor, the more you will learn how to learn from experience better and better, and the more you will learn how to handle whatever crops up better. Then there's help with career planning and prospects. If you have a mentor, then they will get to know you well and may well be able to make recommendations for you when it comes to promotion or, and prospects within the organisation or even if you're thinking of leaving the organisation, they may be happy to use their contacts to help you move on. Mentoring provides ready access to an expert. Mentors are very often experts in one particular field, so you can get ready access to that area of expertise. And then there's networking. Your mentor will most probably be happy to share their network with you, so expanding your own network and the pool of others who can, who can influence and help you. So let's go on to think about disadvantages. So for this exercise, write down what could be the disadvantages for someone who is being mentored. Here are some answers that you may have thought of. Firstly, with mentoring, you only have one person to discuss things with. In some situations, it may be useful to have the help of more than one person. Secondly, there is no qualification as a result of having been mentored. The value of the qualifications for, say, CV purposes has to be balanced with the value of the learning that derives from mentoring. And lastly, some clients find that they become dependent on the mentor. The purpose of mentoring is to help someone learn and develop so that they can handle situations for themselves. But sometimes the bond between the client and the mentor and the style of the relationship can breed dependency. This is something that should be handled very early on in the relationship. So let's go on to think about the mentor and the benefits for them. Mentors that I have spoken to find it a highly enjoyable experience. And the benefits to them include, firstly, their own learning and development. As a mentor, you learn a lot, not only about how to mentor someone, but also through the conversations with your client and discovering ways to help them the most. Then there's the challenge. 
Being a mentor is a challenge that many people enjoy. It's linked with the previous point of working out how to help the person the most. Discovering all about your client and how you can best develop the help that you give them. Then there's job satisfaction. Mentors are often highly experienced people who may have been in their role for some time and mentoring can provide them with something new to add to their role. And there is also the satisfaction of knowing the difference that you've made to someone else. And then there's new ideas. It's not uncommon for mentors to discover all sorts of new ideas from the client or from getting inquisitive and doing research for themselves. Next is recognition. Being a mentor means that you have been recognised for your experience and skills. Then there's inclusion on a CV. For some people, being able to say that they have been a mentor is important for their CV. And also is the intellectual stimulus. Being a mentor gives you intellectual stimulus and the time to reflect on things and how you've approached things in the past, which a busy person may not have had much time to do otherwise. So I wonder if you can think of any other benefits. For this exercise, write down what could be the disadvantages for a mentor. 